Okay, perfect. So I think most of the attendees are already here, which is great, of course. So yeah, welcome everybody from my side. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, how to unlock the full potential of your PV plant. And I will use our software PV Design and I will give you uh, information on how to decrease your unused peak power. And first of all, um, I'm Julian Scheer. So I'm the speaker of today. Uh, I'm a technical advisor at Rated Power. Uh, my background is in energy engineering, and currently I'm covering the DACH market, the UK and Ireland market, and the Nor Northern European market at Rated Power. For the agenda of today, um, I, will, I will start with introducing the general problem uh, we face about unlocking the full potential. Uh, then I will cover the solutions we provide you in PV Design already. And then, of course, I will introduce you to, to a new feature. Um, I will use our software. I will show you uh, how to decrease the unused peak power without um, any changes in your equipment. And lastly, we're going to summarize. And uh, if you have any questions, we will have a Q&A session afterwards. Um, I want to emphasize in this point that if you have any questions throughout the, the webinar, you're more than welcome to put it in the, in the question box, and I will answer them after the webinar. So a bit of a background to, to PV Design and Rated Power for the ones who, who haven't used the software yet. We are a cloud-based software, and very intuitive um, and automated designing as, as possible to do with our software regarding utility scale PV plants. Uh, we will provide you with fast energy yield results. We will provide you with a lot of documentation, um, for example, reports, spreadsheets, SLDs, and CAT layouts. And that's why we think that we are the smartest way to design a utility scale PV plant nowadays. So let me start with the general problem uh, of unused peak power. Um, for this webinar, just a, a quick definition. So unused peak power um, equals the structures we have, uh, which could fit in, in a given area for your PV plant, but they cannot be connected to the low voltage system due to certain limitations uh, I will highlight in the webinar. So how to decrease those and unlock the full potential, that's, that's the goal of today. And just to give you a heads up how unused peak power looks in our software. So we have these two images here and we can see blue and red structures. And the red structures here, um, they cannot be connected to uh, because of those limitations and they will be discarded in the final design. So we will only have the blue structures uh, in our final design. And that kind of um, really is in these two examples, not sufficient enough if you would want to unlock the, the the full potential, the maximum uh, capacity for these areas. So how do we solve that? How do we tackle this problem? And of course, there are already solutions in our software and these solutions will be explained uh, by following this flow diagram. And in this flow diagram, we will ask ourselves, what capacity do we want to achieve? And we can play with uh, equipment, with the inverters, we can play with the DC-AC ratio. So how many modules are basically connected to an inverter and what output power that inverter has. So these are kind of the, the parameters we can, we can change. So yeah, let, let us ask the first question. Um, do we want maximum capacity? And if the answer would be no, we just want the specific capacity, then this is uh, easy, easily done. Um, I will jump to that slide. It's done by selecting a, a certain set of uh, inverters, a certain number, um, adapting the DCAC ratio, and then we will get the blue structures in that image. And we will still see a lot of um, potential, a lot of red structures. Um, but in this case, it's fine because we just desired a specific capacity and we would be done. No further um, solutions, no further solving. So we will be okay in this case. But of course, most of the time we might ask ourselves the other question, we want maximum capacity. So what can be done in this case? And in this specific case, uh, what we can do first, we can um, apply the DCAC ratio and then introduce a lower and upper limit. And on this image here, on the screenshot, you can see how that looks in our software. You can introduce a lower and upper limit. And that already, if seen in the picture here on the right, it already improves the situation. So we can see that the three big structures here, they are blue, completely blue. So no unused peak power here, all the potential is used. And the three small areas, however, they were still not, um, 
they are not in, there's no structure installed there, still all marked in red. So we didn't quite cover the full potential yet. So what, we, what can we do then? Um, we can switch uh, from a central inverter, one, one type of inverter, we can change that to a secondary inverter. So we can introduce two types of inverters and play with the size of that. And in this specific case here, um, what I did, I choose a one, cent one big central inverter and then introduced a smaller one, uh, 300 kilovolt ampere here. And this, this mix of those two types, it already improves the situation a lot. So I just uh, highlighted this here in this image that even the small areas are now covered in blue, which is great, it's an improvement, but for even small areas, still um, the potential is not unlocked. And even though we introduced two types of, of inverters here. So again, what can we do? Right now, we have only used central inverters. So the obvious next step would be, okay, um, I can switch my equipment to string inverters. And by doing that, in the specific case, what I did, I uh, chose a very, very small string inverter. Um, just to really uh, stretch the, the the software to improve as much as possible. Um, this small string inverter, of course, operates on the same voltage as my modules. So there are smaller string inverters, but in, in the software, this was a limitation in this case. And what I can see is, okay, um, two more structures in this very small area could now be connected, which is super great. Um, but still, the, the, the tiny um, module tables here are still marked in red which still um, leaves some potential left. So we did a lot of changes. We changed a lot of the equipment already. So what else can we do? Or what else could we do so far? And this would be related to other parameters. And in, in our software, the specific tweaking, let's say, um, is referring to unifying areas. And in this example, what I did, I unified the two smallest areas. I was connecting them and they are now sharing their electrical configuration. And this enables them to connect and share their um, low voltage system. But what I had to do is I had to cover um, with an RA, which refers to restricted area. I had to cover all that part, which is not desired for any structures with um, this red uh, area. And that is unpleasant to, to look at. It's not um, an optimal way to to kind of improve and unlock the full potential. So it was a workaround, but now with a new feature, and I will come to that now, um, we, we would change all of that. So by introducing that shared LV feature, we now enable you to share that low voltage system. And what do I mean by low voltage system? So um, at the left, you can see strings. All of the strings, um, they go either in a string box, uh, if we chose a central inverter, in case of a string inverter, the strings will uh, will be connected to a string inverter directly. And then from the string box or the string inverter on the left, we will have the low voltage system being connected to the power station. And then from the power station, we will have our medium voltage system. And this is how we def de yeah, define uh, divide basically strings, LV system and medium voltage system. So just for you to know, what I'm referring to if I if I talk about low voltage DC. Um, on the next slide, um, I will quickly highlight our equipment selection, and this is very important because um, I showed you our previous solutions, and in these cases we had to change our inverters, make them smaller. Um, we didn't have to change the structure or the module, but uh, there was a lot of change in equipment, DC-AC ratio, um, and all of the all of that is not necessary anymore. And I just wanted to highlight that by um, sticking to these uh, three equipments. Uh, so I chose a 700 watt module, uh, a, a quite large central inverter AB from ABB and a 2V configured uh, structure. And now I will switch uh, to our software. I will open perfect timing. Um, I will open our software, and this is basically the interface you will see when you open PV Design. And for again, for the participants who haven't used our software yet, this is the the overview within one project. You can see different design iterations. You can see already some um, results of those uh, specific designs. And I will start by jumping into my first example. And here we are now in the design process. So on the top, you can see uh, all the tabs which you can change parameters in. 
And in the final top corner here on the right, you can generate the design. And this is basically what you do in our software. And first of all, I want to highlight, okay, the equipment. I chose the equipment I mentioned, the 700 watt module. I chose the, the same inverter. And I also chose the structure I mentioned earlier. Regarding the DCAC ratio, um, which can be seen in our layout tab under power requirements. Um, here again, I chose a certain DCAC ratio. I gave a lower and upper limit. So this is where we start from basically. And now without changing the equipment, I can use that new feature. And this is called group areas in LV. And by clicking on that feature, I now have the uh, possibility to mark either of these uh, areas. And let me just choose this area here, which doesn't have any red structure, so no unused peak power. And I wanted to group it with this area here, with ha which has some unused peak power highlighted in those red structures. By clicking on group, now they are grouped together and they are sharing their low voltage system now. And let's see if that improved the situation. And by loading now, we can see Okay, the red structures are now less. They are now in this area. So I'm wondering, okay, why is this uh, not improving the situation completely? And this is the reason because we were grouping one area which already had no unused peak power with an area which had potential. So in total, there was not so much potential to be shared. So what I will do now, I will click again on that feature. I will click on the group and I will ungroup. I will reload again. So we will see on top here, um, that our total unused peak power will decrease. Yep, so now we are back to the starting. And so I can see that these two areas here, they would share, um, they would have more potential. There are more red structures here. So what I will do now, I will do the same process again, just click on those two areas, group them, and by refreshing, yes, perfect. So now we solve the problem by, by, just, by just grouping those two areas and how that will look in our result, um, I will show you in the next step. So here we can see basically what our software PV design provides you as a result after generating the design. And you can see medium voltage lines, low voltage lines. And in this specific example here, we can see that now the, the low voltage line is shared between those two areas. And that is exactly what I was intending to do. And we can still see that our medium voltage lines in dark orange here, they are um, not the same. So we might think, okay, what, why, why can we not use the same trench, the same line in our design? Why, why not, can we not just use um, the, the medium voltage line already, which exists, um, and follow that path with our low voltage cable? And this is exactly what we can do next by introducing an MB line. And I will show you how that will look um, in, our, in the next image. So here we can see a result of another design where I introduced a, a medium voltage trench. And now we can see instead of taking the most direct line, uh, it will follow the trench. And I can highlight that by activating this layer here. Perfect. So I can really see that this dark orange line was my uh, medium voltage trench or line, which I defined. And by deactivating it again, I can see that my shared LV system is exactly following the trench. So that improved the situation um, a lot. It made it more realistic in some cases. Sometimes you want to have the most direct connection, but in case you want it that way, uh, it worked perfectly fine. So next we would uh, think about what to do when we have many areas. And this is highlighted in this example. And this is uh, quite interesting. So we have many different available areas and now we want to see what happens if I group those areas, how are these areas connected if I have many different ones. And in this specific example, um, if I click on group areas, I can see by clicking here that this is already a group I defined earlier. And I can see, okay, the situation is, uh, is good. There is not many red structures. I can see some red structures up here, but it looks perfectly fine. So the, it worked fine, the tool. But if I would compare it now with the results, um, and we will ignore all the other areas for now, we will just cover these five um, small areas here, which I grouped. If we look at the results, what happens is, um, you might not see a, a big problem here, but what we can see is that, um, let me first show the low voltage 
lines, we can see it worked. So the low voltage um, system is shared between those areas. We can see connections, all of them here, which is super great. But the software also tells me by highlighting different colors um, of, of modules that this very bright um, blue color here is only found down here. So that's a problem. Uh, if I want to share my structures, my unused peak power, I don't want to share this um, area on the bottom with the area up here. I want to connect the closest areas next to each other. And so far, this is not uh, the ideal case. So what, how did we solve the problem in PV design? Well, um, you can go back, you can go um, to the feature, click on the group, you want to change the priority now. And this is how we refer to priority AA. What do we mean by that? So basically um, we have the five polygons. If I go out, I can click on each polygon. I can see the name, polygon number eight, 10, 11. So all of these polygons have names, of course. And if I click on um, the group again, and I go on priority, what I can do now, I can set certain priorities. And if I set, for example, number 10 is down here, I set it as a priority here, I can connect it with uh, 11, um, then 13, which will follow that specific order. You have to trust me on that. Um, but yeah, you can basically decide different priorities. And if I would move eight to the top now, that would mean um, this upper area will be sharing their low voltage system first, then it will jump to polygon 10, which will, which is the area down here, and this is undesired. So I can change that um, prioritization. And what happens if I choose the correct priority, prioritization? Well, I will go ahead and see what the results offer me. Um, I already simulated the design. So what we can see now is, again, the blue, uh, everything is blue here, but we can see that the different colors here, they match better. So this dark blue area here is connected with this dark blue area. We can see these, this shade is matching that shade. So now we have a perfect line and the low voltage system is shared efficiently between neighboring areas, which is great. We don't waste any additional low voltage system. So that is exactly why this priority tool can be very helpful in, in such cases. I will ju jump back to the to the presentation. Um, give you a quick summary already. So so what did we talk about? Um, we talked about that more peak power with that feature shared LV, more peak power could be installed by connecting different AAs, which we call available areas in our software, by keeping the same equipment, and that is essential. We didn't have to change any inverter. We didn't have to tweak some parameters. We could keep the same equipment, and just by using that tool, we could. Um, unlock the full potential actually of, of our plant. Um, the next feature of our tool is that uh, now by defining an MV trench, when you define that, our LV cables will follow that. And that's sometimes desired. And this is what we, uh, we enabled you to do. And last but not least, by using that prioritization tool, uh, you could really improve which structures are connected uh, and not just connecting random structures all over the group. You can really highlight what structures you want to connect closest to each other. And this is very helpful. Thank you for your attention so far. Um, if you have any questions, uh, I'm all ears. Uh, you can ask them in the question box in the GoToWebinar and I'm happy to answer them. And I will click right away on the question box. So the first question I can see here is, how can I get access to the software for professional design use? So of course, um, what, what we at Rated Power offer, like if you're interested in using our software, you can always uh, make a demo account, uh, or not a demo account, you can, you can ask for a demo and we're happy to explain your software and then you can, you can have a trial um, for a certain amount of time. You can test the software, uh, ask any questions you have, and in case you want to proceed, you want to work with our software, that can be discussed afterwards. So that would be the direct uh, usage if you want to access our software um, for professional usage. So just uh, go to our website or write me an email and uh, we can arrange a, a demo and I will explain the software to you. The next question would be, um, how, a, how is a MV route defined? Okay, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I will maybe go back to the slide. 
So when I talked about the, or maybe let me jump directly to the software again. As I highlighted before, um, sometimes there is no MV root defined. So MV root is this MV line here. Um, and in case it's not defined, then it will be the direct line here. So how do we define that in our software? I will go ahead, choose any example. Let's go to that example here. I will go to the location tab. Um, I will go to site. And here you can see all my different sites I created already. I can clone a site or I can create a new one, but let me just clone this existing site. And I will go into our site creation tool. And now you don't see any MV line. And what I can do is I can select the path tool select the MV cable and just connect two areas. Let me see, just collect those two, for example, or in my given example of today, what I did, I connected this area. I was following the path here and I was connecting it to that part. So that is um, how we define it. And then if you save the site, um, you would have that MV line. And if you group any areas, they will follow um, that MV line. So the L LV system, the low voltage system will follow that MV line specifically. But great question. Um, the next question was regarding where do I see, okay, where do I see how much peak power I have in the groups? Okay, okay. Yeah, that's a good, a good one too, because of course, if we group many areas, um, let me go to that example, that maybe highlights it better. Um, if we have many different uh, areas here, We'll go to the, whoop. yeah, here we go. Um, we want to know, okay, what is the, the peak power here? Um, we're not interested in the total peak power. We want to use, and that's, I guess, what the question was referring to. Uh, you want to see what peak power each of those areas have. And basically, this can be seen in, if you go up here, if I, if I, if I go to the right here, you can show values per area. And by clicking on it, I can see, okay, all my polygons, I had many polygons defined. I can see what rate of power it has, what peak power, what's the DCAC ratio. And in such cases, uh, for example, polygon 12, polygon seven, I can see there is no um, peak power installed and that will refer to those elements here. So let me just go back, click on these. So here's polygon 12, for example, um, here's polygon seven. So in these two examples, um, I didn't group them, so they are not uh, sharing any low voltage system, and therefore there is a lot of potential left. I mean, I can just go ahead and show you an example by enabling our feature, clicking on, let's say, these two, these three areas. I will group them, I will refresh, and now it should be improving the system. Let's see what happens. Yeah, perfect. So already we can see that now more P power is installed. There are still um, some limitations up here, um, but this is basically um, now when I could click on show values per areas, I would see that I have two groups defined now. So this group up here has a total rate of power and peak power of, of that given value. And for this smaller group here, we have a total peak power of 14 megawatt, a uh, rate of power of 14 megawatt, for example. Great. Okay, next question. I will open the question box again. This is possible to export a KML file and PVSYST file. Okay, this is a question related to our software in general. A uh, great question. So regarding exporting KML and PVSYST files, I will go ahead and show you our result page. So basically here, what you see is um, what our software gives you as a result. You can see the, the overview about the energy um, results. You can see some losses here in that tab um, regarding front face losses, for example. And if you click on the top right here um, called documentation, if I click here, uh, a drop down menu appears. And this is what I was referring to in the beginning. I was referring to the, the different uh, documents and technical reports we provide you with. And you mentioned KML uh, file uh, or KMZ and the PVSYST file. So here for the drawings, um, we have the general layout uh, that can be exported as KML. Um, the terrain slopes can be exported as KML as well. And for the PVSYST export uh, feature, we provide you with our 3D scene. Um, we call it PVC file, so PV Collada file. 
And for every design, you can uh, just click here, uh, download the file, and then import it to PV Design, eh, PV Assist. So yeah, we can do it. And also, if you mentioned KML files, I will go to the location tab, and you can also import um, KML files uh, as your site, for example. So in case you already have your site um, as a KML file before you use our software, what you can do is instead of creating a new site, you can upload your site uh, right here with that tool, and that just uh, saves a lot of time already. Um, exactly. Okay, great. I will look into the question box again. Okay, so the question is related to you grouped five areas, but there's still red structures. Okay. So exactly, okay, I guess uh, the question is referring to, to the example I showed here. Um, and what happened here is I, I kind of grouped, let me click on that group. Yeah, I grouped those five areas, but for some reason I could still see some red structures up here. And there's that is kind of the limitation of that new shared LV feature. Um, and that is referring to, okay, I, I, I gave a, a certain DCAC ratio, for example, it's it's kind of a lower and upper limit, which is quite narrow still, because I might want to uh, hit the 1.2 exactly, more or less. Um, this can be the limitation, for example. So uh, I, these structures, if I would connect them to one of my inverters, um, there's still the problem of maybe exceeding or under undergoing that DCAC ratio I defined. So in this specific case, and the question is good, um, I can, for example, make that ratio, I can enlarge that ratio. Let me go a little bit, a little bit bigger. And maybe we can see if it improves the situation. That's T. Okay, perfect. So already now we had to tweak our parameters a little bit, um, but it's still much less compared to before that a feature was released. So in this case, now by allowing um, a lower and upper limit, uh, we could cover that whole area in blue. It also improved it for other areas, by the way, which were not grouped yet. But this was the reason um, why there were still some red areas, although we grouped them all together. And this could be improved by that, for example. Um, but of course, if you don't want to do that, you might have to group more areas. So let me just show you another example. Let's make that narrow again. Okay, reloading. So now we are back to, to, to that. So what I can do, of course, I could say, um, let me ungroup this group and let me select maybe more areas. I will just group more areas. And this would give me enough flexibility now to share the low voltage system amongst those areas. And that could, okay, it still doesn't improve the situation up here, which uh, is no problem, but yeah, we improve the situation of course here. So yeah, we, we still have some limitations in, in this new feature, but uh, they're much less compared to compared to before. Okay, I will open the question tab again. So the next question is related to, okay, I can still see many blank spaces. Yeah, okay, you're you're very very right. So I was the whole talk was about unlocking the full potential, and at the end you can still see a lot of blank spaces here. Um, so the area, even though it's all in blue, so there's less unused um, peak power, still we have the problem that it's not really fully covered, and this is of course true. And for example, what we have in our software, which uh, really changes that problem, is if I would click on equipment. Um, we know the module, we know the inverter. And if I click on structures, for example, I, I have the structure selected. My software, the software will give me the recommended range of modules per string, um, strings per structures as well. And now here, the partial structure, that is where I can uh, allow the software to additionally use um, structures which are shorter. So we can see that if I have four strings per structure, my table length, let's say, is 71 meters long. But in this case, if I have, let's say, if I allow the software to use shorter tables as well with only three strings or two strings or even just one string, um, we should fill up that area even better. So let me just reload here. Let's see what happens. Okay. 
Perfect. So now we can see that still there is some unused people are here, but that is related to that we didn't group those areas yet. So if I if I zoom in, we can see now that uh, these small areas are covered much better. We can still see that there are some some spaces which are greater than others, and this is referring to the roads. So in our software, of course, you can um, you can decide what kind of roads you want to have in each area, and this is this is space which is desired. So let's let's say like let's say it like this but uh, compared to before now the area is covered better so it was not a problem of the software it was more about selecting the right parameters here but i hope i could show that this is fairly easy and really quick to do uh, in pv design so so that's kind of kind of great in this case okay i will go to the question box again no more questions Okay, yeah, one more question here. Uh, the question is, what was it? If one area, ah, okay. It was referring to what if, if one area is kind of, um, let me go back, I think I can show that example better. The question is, if one area has not the full potential used, how does the software decide where to place these structures? And in this example, it's quite bad to show now because we we don't have any large blank spaces, but let me just go to another example. Here it's much better, I guess, yes. So let me um, clone that example, and I will zoom in. Okay, so uh, now we are back to to the example I showed in the, in the talk before. Um, if I if I see that's the group and the question was referring to exactly to those red structures up here. So if I have some unused people, how does the software decide where to leave those? Like I, it could be that they're on the right, they could be on the left as well. So what what does the algorithm, what does the software do to decide that all my, all my blue structures are more orientated to the left, for example? Um, and this is a great a great question. If I go to the site and I will close that group areas in LV feature, if I show the details, um, what I can see is two things. I can see the name of the polygons, so polygon one, polygon two, which really helps also in the prioritization. So whenever you you, you question yourself what areas uh, in my group should be prioritized first and which should come next, then you can always go back here um, or as I did it before, if I clear details, you can always click on each area and it will give you the name. But the very other important detail is that AC point. And AC point in our software is equal to an MV point if there is no additional MV point uh, defined. And that is basically where all the MV lines will come together. And from that AC or MV point, uh, they will go out and reach the the MV point of our substation. So in this case, the substation is defined down here. It's a, a separate area in our software. But so this is basically what this AC point is for. It will also uh, be used for the roads to be connected to that point. AC stands for access. So uh, here's like the gate. You can uh, all the roads will end up here, um, which is good for for a design. And in the specific case. Um, I will go and clear the details first. You can see, I guess you can already see what I'm what I'm heading for. So here you see that all those blue structures are more orientated to the left. And that reason is because if I show the details again and I zoom in, I can see that basically the, the AC point is placed on the left side. And that is why the, the whole algorithm kind of places my structures closest to that AC point and then leaves those structures furthest away uh, in red and not the other way around and that what that does is basically it minimizes the the length of our cables so if i would have put all the blue structures on the right side far away from that ac point that would have just made my all my uh, mv lines and lv lines much longer and this is why we choose it here and this is for every little area as well I can show, uh, check the questions again. It doesn't seem that there is more questions going on. I could maybe just show one last um, example, um, which always is quite helpful. And maybe you have asked yourself the same thing. But of course, if you have group areas, 
um, I can ungroup all the groups I, I created, but I think this is it. Yeah, exactly. So what I can always do, of course, I can select all the areas and group them all together. I will not group the, the area far away here because this would create a very long low voltage line, which causes a, a large voltage drop, for example. So we will remain uh, in this cluster here. But of course, you can group all of them together and of course you can decide on the prioritization but basically if i perfect if if i group them all together now we can see all of them are now sharing their low voltage system and that improves the situation the best so this is always a case you can do um, again maybe i should show the example with partial structures and this is also important when you use our software uh, in case you're interested whenever you change a parameter like for example, grouping them all together, or in this case, I think I jumped to another design, so it's not applicable in this case, but it can happen that if you change, let's say your structure or your inverter, just double check quickly if, for example, the partial structures option is still enabled. And if not, um, just do it again, fairly easy, fairly quick. And by reloading, we should see that now more potential is covered of that area. Okay, perfect. So yeah, so that's just always a good uh, a good tool in case you have all the areas and you just want to unlock the full potential, then you can uh, click on that group areas LV and select all of them together. And that will kind of optimize uh, the end peak power. It should be very small, now, only two megawatts. These are referring to the to the bottom right area here. But of course, just remember, this doesn't mean that the low voltage system is efficiently connected. Um, and that can be again done by prioritizing different areas. And in this case, it's very helpful to just go out, um, remember which names are close to each other, and then just select the different priorities here. We'll go ahead and ungroup that area again and refresh. Okay, let me go to the question again. But it seems quiet in, in the question box. So I hope this is uh, kind of clear. And now that I ungrouped all of those areas, we can see already what kind of um, unused people we had before around 11 megawatt. And this could be just with a few clicks, you could easily change it and improve the situation. Okay, perfect. So yeah, thank you so much for your attention. Um, I hope it was it was clear. If you have any questions, just let me know. You can uh, drop me an email if you want, uh, or contact our support. And if you're interested, like one of the questions we're related to, you can always uh, request a demo. We're happy to show you our software more in detail. There are many more tabs to go through, um, many more potential, much more potential, let's say. And yes, I will say goodbye from my side and hope to see you in the next webinar.